Are you here to improve your investment strategies? Are you looking for that one article that could help you finalize that decision you were holding off? Well then, get ready to learn more and gain just that subtle extra knowledge to get an edge in the investment business. Because if you're new here, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to The Daily Fortune, a channel where we talk about all the latest news, updates, guides, and strategies related to investment. Of course, with that said, we're going to be discussing a lot about the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, The Big Short, Michael Burry, The Money Tree, Kathy Woods, Tesla's very own CEO and eccentric billionaire, Elon Musk, along with the rest of the big leagues to learn just a bit more from the professionals. And don't worry, of course we talk about crypto, and we also talk about the best stocks to invest in, along with many tips and tricks on how to handle your finances so you never lose. So before we talk about making money, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell as well to make sure you won't miss a single video. Now let's get started! The CEO of Social Capital, Chamath Palihapitiya, is unquestionably one of our generation's most successful investors. He had multiple successful investments over the last decade, including early investments in Amazon, Facebook, Bitcoin, Slack, and Tesla. He recently indicated that he believes he has discovered the next stock with a tenfold potential in five years. He even predicted that his company would become the next Amazon and Tesla in its field. So Ron Barron, a well-known investor, also has invested in his stock. And just so you know, Ron Barron is also an early investor in Tesla. While managing his fund-bearing partners, he has also successfully invested in several other companies in the last 25 years. Ron has averaged a 13% annual return, not including the year 2020 when his flagship fund returned almost 100%. Maybe you're already curious, what is this company? For today's video, we'll find out what that company is and it is a good buy right now. So the stock that I'll share and explain to you is the SoFi or the Social Finance. In this video, first we'll go over what SoFi is and how it's transforming the banking industry. Then we'll go into SoFi's growth cycle and how it got to 10 times. And then the CEO of SoFi and how we're going to describe his leadership. Finally, the value of SoFi and whether it is a buy today. So let's get started. Chamath and Ron believe the stock SoFi has a lot of upside potential in the long run. SoFi, a technological firm disrupting the large banking business, is joining via SBAC under the ticket code IPOE. SoFi appears to have eliminated several sectors of the financial services industry, and the company claims to have a market cap of $2 trillion. It's not something to ignore when disrupting such a massive industry. I will highlight what SoFi has to offer and why Chamath and Ron believe SoFi has a lot of long-term investment potential. Yeah, you know, a lot of the things that I do is try to look at back at some of the best investments we've made like Amazon and Tesla and try to find patterns. And in this, what I was trying to do was map those patterns into financial services just because we're at a point in time where it's clear that the banking infrastructure really isn't meeting the needs of U.S. consumers. And so what I did was just kind of systematically try to figure out what was broken in banking and then try to figure out which company was best representative of the solution that people wanted, which I can basically tell you is three things. People want low to no fees, they want fair and transparent lending, and they want a full suite of products so that you can basically have a one-stop shop. And SoFi basically was the top of the list when I, when I looked across all the companies on those dimensions. We already discussed what SoFi is, but what sets it apart from the competition is a different story. Fast services, a wide range of offerings, content, and convenience are all seen as competitive advantages by SoFi. SoFi's social network was recently added to this list. On YouTube, we can all debate our investment ideas with one another. SoFi wants to get into this market with its new social investment features. These features include the ability to see what other SoFi members are investing in, discover new investment ideas, and compare how you perform to others. Disrupting the investing social network has some potential, but the most unique aspect of SoFi is its growth loop. The growth loop of SoFi is described as a financial services productivity loop. So SoFi establishes trust with a consumer through one product. 
which encourages the customer to use SoFi's other services. SoFi can lower its customer acquisition costs by doing so. The reason for this is that because the cost of acquiring a customer is lower, SoFi can spend more money on marketing than its competitors. The winner of their respective field takes the largest market share, as we've seen with other online businesses. Amazon, Spotify, Facebook, and Airbnb, among other companies, are examples. SoFi's dominance in the fintech industry will allow it to capture the lion's share of the market. 80% of consumers, according to SoFi's research, use multiple banks because none of them are adequate to one-stop shops. SoFi aims to change this by being the only firm that offers all banking services in a single application. SoFi is gradually becoming a prominent player in the fintech business due to its unique strategy. In fact, by 2021, SoFi hopes to have surpassed 3 million users, representing a 75% increase year over year. As I previously stated, the fact that SoFi has numerous products means that revenue growth can be accelerated by customers who use all of SoFi's products. SoFi's multi-product members are predicted to climb 95% year-over-year by 2021. This multi-product consumption results in a higher lifetime value for each customer resulting in increased profitability for SoFi. In fact, existing users who try out other SoFi services account for 24% of product purchases. Over 65% of home loans in the third quarter of 2020 originated from existing members. Existing members who tried the home loan service were acquired with only 1 million in marketing and generated 30 million in income. SoFi has just paid $1.2 billion for the payment services company, Galileo. Galileo makes it simple for companies to open bank accounts and issue both physical and virtual credit cards. Robinhood is one company that uses Galileo that you may be familiar with. SoFi intends to combine its present products with Galileo to become a provider of bank accounts, loans, stocks, and virtual credit cards to all fintech firms. This is comparable to Amazon Web Services, which provides a framework for many of the websites you use today and generates significant revenue. Furthermore, Galileo's expansion has been accelerating. Due to the rise of online payments in 2020, Galileo's overall account number reached 50 million in the third quarter of 2020. SoFi's remedy is projected to sell out incredibly fast between 2020 to 2025 due to its multi-product moat. SoFi intends to generate $3.6 billion in revenue by 2025. By 2025, SoFi expects its EBITDA or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization to be $1.1 billion. All of SoFi's goods are at various maturity stages because this lending program has a 58% profit margin and its technology platform, Galileo, has a 625% profit margin. SoFi's financial services platform, on the other hand, is predicted to grow at a rapid rate from 2020 to 2025. Because fintech companies aren't insured banks, they usually have to pay others to insure their money. SoFi recently received preliminary clearance to become an actual bank, which means it will no longer be required to pay other banks to insure its funds. In the graph, you can see that being a real bank will dramatically enhance margins by lowering the cost of capital. This will help Help SoFi increase profitability while also saving money for marketing. So we've seen how powerful SoFi's branding and pricing are. Let's now move on to the company's leadership. When evaluating a business to see if it's a potential investment, one of the most crucial factors to consider is leadership. Tesla and Amazon would not be where they are now if it weren't for Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. SoFi CEO is Anthony Nado, who has helped top leadership positions in the NFL and Twitter. Chamath has spoken to Anthony and has concluded that Anthony is someone who can drive SoFi towards its growth. This is what Chamath said about Anthony Nado. Look, I think you're seeing, um, even through the events of the last 24 hours, leadership and character really matter because you are faced with incredibly difficult decisions of policy, of morality, um, all kinds of things. Here's what I can tell you just personally about Anthony. Um, he has lived an incredibly hard life to get to where he has. And I have tremendous empathy for that because I've lived a similar path. And so I just have deep respect for the man that he is and the character that he has. But then, you know, practically speaking in his career, he is just completely money in the bank. I mean, the former CFO of the NFL, the former CFO of Twitter, the former COO of Twitter, an incredible banker, a great research analyst, and just a wonderful human being. So this is sort of a what you see is what you get kind of guy. 
who really believes in you know advancing financial services for you know middle America um, for normal folks to be able to sort of get ahead and I just think that that's a person you want to see win and then as a result the company that he's built is just really special we must examine the stock's valuation and determine whether it's currently a buy As previously stated, SoFi will merge with Chamath Palihapitiya's SBAC, which is known as IPOE in the ticker symbol. SoFi is worth $8.7 billion at $10 a share. We'll use four indicators to determine whether SoFi is undervalued or overvalued. The PDE ratio in 2024 and 2025, as well as the price to sales ratio in 2020 and 2021. In 2020, SoFi intended to lose $220 million and generate $621 million in revenue. This would value SoFi at a price of sales ratio of 26, which is fairly high. But considering that margins are projected to improve significantly once consumers experience SoFi's multi products offering, comparing this to Square, which has a price to sales ratio of 14, isn't accurate. In 2021, the SoFi price to sales ratio is 16, which is significantly closer to Square's current price to sales ratio. SoFi's 2024 PDE ratio would be 41, which is relatively low for a growth firm. SoFi's 2025 PDE ratio is 26, however. Remember that these PDE ratios are deflated because they are based on SoFi's numbers prior to receiving preliminary permission for a bank charter, which the company has already received. If SoFi is valued at a price to sales ratio of 15 in 2025, it has a clear path to three times from its current valuations, as per my calculations. Let me say that this is not a piece of financial advice, but it appears to be an appealing long-term investment to me. If you're wondering when to possibly buy in, the dollar cost average is the greatest technique, but always do your own research. And that was it, all about Chamath Palihapitiya's brand new SBAC SoFi. Do you believe SoFi is a good investment? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something from today's video. And to get updated with the next videos, don't forget to hit the notification bell. See you next time.